Hello, my friend. Keith Johnson here, America's number one confidence coach. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm here just uh, hanging out in sunny Florida here at my home uh, in Tampa, Florida. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day today. The temperature's like setting right at about 75 degrees. So I'm just sitting back here and uh, relaxing, but I, I felt really compelled to share about this subject, discovering the number one hindrance to church growth. Now, if you're a pastor or a church leader, you're going to want to stay tuned for this session together. You know, I've spent the last, wow, 25 years of my life uh, coaching, training, um, inspiring, motivating, basically Christian people from all walks of life, from pastors to business leaders to housewives. Uh, and uh, it's, been a, it's been a great journey. But you know, a lot of times when we talk about church growth, I believe healthy things grow. How about you? I mean, if you look back in the back, you see these wonderful palm trees and, uh, you know, they're, they're healthy. They're growing. You know why they're growing? Because they get sunlight. If they were up north right now in the cold, they would be dead. If... Um, you know, if they didn't get fertilizer, I, uh, I make sure that my, uh, my company, they spray them, they fertilize them on a regular basis. So they're getting, they're, they're getting fertilization, they're getting water. I have a sprinkler system and that sprinkler system kicks on and it waters them on a regular basis. So you look at the outward uh, picture of these palm trees and you say, okay, those palm trees are healthy. Um, and so naturally, it's crazy. These palm trees just grow like, like crazy, naturally, because of this. And so I think the question in the church that we have is if our churches aren't growing, which statistics show right now that the majority of churches in America and even around the world, they're stagnant, if not even in decline, the majority of them. Now, yes, there's those 5% that are projecting for growth, that are moving forward and growing, but there's a lot of them that are really struggling. And so why? Why are they struggling? Why are there some churches that are just healthy and growing and prospering and other ones that just are struggling along? So today I want to ask you the question, what do you think is the number one hindrance to church growth? See, I, I want you to post that below, will you? I want you to take some time and if you're live listening, just post it down what you think the answer is. Or uh, if you're watching the replay, we love replay people. <laughs> so if you're listening and maybe it's a, a, the following day, a couple days down the road, just post down there. Why do you think? Seriously, don't be bashful. It's, it's your answer is your answer. Okay. But I want to hear from you. Why do you think that churches aren't growing and, and and what I'm looking for is the number one reason why now I've been asking leaders of churches uh, for all you know I spend about 45 days out of the year on Sunday you know they only have so many weekends but every weekend I'm in a church speaking somewhere around the world and on Saturday, I always do a leadership conference where I, where I bring all the leaders of that church together. And I just lay out a whiteboard. And I said, what's the number one hindrance to this church growing? And I said, I want to hear from you. And I've done this for a lot of years. And 
Uh, I'll have a whiteboard full of reasons. So, you know, some people say, well, this church doesn't pray. We need more prayer. We need to worship God more. We need, the reason why it's not growing is we need revival. The reason why this isn't growing because we need a better preacher. <laughs> we need better teach. We need more teaching. We need more education. Sometimes they say, well, we need, we need more ministry to the children. We, we need more, you know, outreach ministries. Uh, what else do they say? Um, we uh, we need a better facilities. We need a bigger parking lot. We need blah 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 blah. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on. And I've been doing this survey for a lot of years. <clears throat> and here's the interesting thing: is I've never run into one church that actually answers what the real reason why churches don't grow. I, I've, never, I've never had one person answer. In all these years of doing this survey, they've never identified what the number one hindrance, not two, three, four, five. Yeah, a lot of those answers I gave, yeah, I, I'm down with you, yeah. I mean, uh, it's important for churches to have proper facilities. It's important for churches to have outreach. It's important for churches to have ushers and greeters that do things with excellence. Yes, all, all of this is true, but my question is, what's the number one thing that's holding a pastor and a church back from growing a fully healthy, thriving church? Are you ready for it? Here's what I found. The number one hindrance to church growth is this. It's the hyper busyness of the senior pastor. Well, somebody write that down in the chat, please. It's the hyper busyness of the senior pastor. That's the number one thing. And I've been in a lot of churches over the years. You know, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. So you figure 40 40 weekends a year for 20 years. That's a lot of places I've been in. And you know what I find? I find that a lot of leaders get distracted. That a lot of leaders, when I go to their churches, they're doing things that just doesn't matter. They, they, they're, what, what they're doing is they're running around putting out a bunch of church fires. And they're not focusing on the one thing that they need to do and do with absolute excellence so their church will grow. So what I find many times, you got pastors running around there. I mean, it's crazy sometimes. Sometimes they're, you know, they're doing bulletins. Sometimes the pastor's vi doing hospital visitation. Sometimes the pastor's you know, doing marriage counseling or counseling everybody. Sometimes pastors are helping move people. They're, <laughs> they're like, they're doing all these, all these things in the church. You know, they're, they're messing around with the sound system. They're messing around with, with re, you know, repairing different things on the church and, you know, building a, putting a roof on and the pastor's out there putting the roof on. <laughs> and, and, and I, and I laugh because, so many pastors, they get caught up in doing the menial task of the ministry that they forget about the main thing that they're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be doing one thing and you're supposed to be doing it with absolute excellence. What is that? You're supposed to be preaching the gospel and doing it and communicating it in such a way that it impacts and changes people every time. Listen to this. Every time you get up and speak, that when you speak, you're saying something that is transformational, that you are saying thing, something that inspires people, that you are saying something that motivates people to go live their God-given dreams. Every Sunday morning is Super Bowl Sunday. Every Sunday morning, you got to be at your very best. But what happens? 
We miss the most important thing. We get caught up in Monday through Saturday doing all this menial stuff that culture places a demand on you. Culture is telling you that you've got to go pray for the sick. Well, you're supposed to be equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. Not you running around trying to pray for everybody. God didn't call you to be a counselor. God didn't call you to move people because they got to move out of their apartment or move out of their house. God called you to be a communicator of the gospel. And the truth of the matter is, so many pastors, when they get up on Sunday, they just started preparing their message on Saturday. That's mediocre, my friend. That's mediocre. You should be preparing your messages months in advance. When you watch guys on television, when you see these guys with mega churches, listen to me, they didn't start preparing their message on Saturday. No, no, no. That's an amateur communicator. When you want to be world class, you're preparing months and months in advance. When I coach my pastors, and I've been doing this for many years, I've been coaching pastors to uh, grow their churches. I've been very, very, very successful at it. I have a 95% success rate. When I come and help a church, I have a 95% success rate that that church will break its, its barriers and move to that next level that they're believing for. I've helped many, 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 many churches break what I call the thousand barrier. And uh, it's been amazing to watch over the years that pastors who will make a decision to make that change. Man, I'm getting rained on on here. Man, it was a beautiful day when we started off. Now it's raining. <laughs> but hey, I'm not going to let a little rain stop me because I know this message is an important message for leaders. And it's important for you to understand this little nugget of truth that, listen, my friend, You've got to get focused on the number one important thing you're supposed to do. Be a great communicator. What I do as a coach, I come in and I help pastors eliminate all the other stuff that they're doing. It's going to take change. It's going to take transition. That's why you're going to need a coach. And the number one promise I, I tell leaders, I say, when I come into your life, my goal is to get to take everything off your desk, so that you're only doing one thing, the most important thing. And every time I do that, growth happens, change happens, increase starts happening in churches. Hey, my time's up and uh, I'm getting rained on right now, but hey, let it rain, let it rain, right? Yeah, Maria's on the, on the thing saying, let it rain. Yes, let it rain. So thank you so much. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be coming weekly and sharing some messages for senior pastors, for those of you who want to see God's church grow. Remember, 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 my friend, healthy things grow. My palm tree back there, I love my palm trees. I love palm trees. My palm tree is healthy. It's growing because it's being taken care of properly. And if you're a pastor, if your church is not growing, it's a sign to you that something is unhealthy. And usually what I find, my friend, what I find is we've got a lot of unhealthy pastors in the pulpits who are burned out and stressed out. And I want to help you in any way I can. Listen, I got a book called The LQ Solution, Influence, Impact, and Increase. And if you go to keithjohnson.tv slash coaching, keithjohnson.tv slash coaching, you can get this book for free. I'm going to give it to you. This, this is a book that I wrote about how I grew my church larger than my community in which it dwelt. And this, is, this will help you. All you got to do is pay for the shipping. That's it. So go to keithjohnson.tv slash coaching. Or you can just go to my website, keithjohnson.tv. Go up on the coaching thing. Hit that and hit senior pastors. 
but you can go, you can pick this book up. I want to get it to you. And uh, this book will help you. It goes over a lot of the things I went through when I was stuck, when I was struggling as a pastor in a small church in a rural area. And we grew that thing. And it was amazing. So thank you so much for joining me. Hey, if you know somebody, if you know a pastor, some of you are going to, who are listening to this, you know pastors who need this. They're stressed out. They have, they're having thoughts of quitting, of giving up. Share this, will you? Pastors need to hear this. Share it. I so appreciate it. And if you're a pastor, you know you know other pastors who need this. And definitely the leaders around you need to hear this message. So I look forward to connecting with you. Grab the book, The LQ Solution. Influence, impact, and increase. That's what we want for you and for your ministry and for your life in this next year. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. And please, let me know that you're, you're watching. Let me know that you're listening. God bless you. Have a great day.